Hello, I'm Dr. Lee. Welcome to Practical Pain Management. In this video, I'm going to discogenic pain, which is very common cause of chronic spinal pain. It is a long story, so I split it into two parts. This video is part one. I'd appreciate it if you could turn on English caption for better communication. You are living in an unequal world, but there is one thing that has no exception, aging process and degeneration. Young people have very fresh bodies and experience no pain. A health disc shows the regular thickness and smooth alignment of the intersegment. Pain is one of the parts of the life of an aged person. Intersegmental instability is one of the causes of the chronic pain. Pain is not an option for the elderly group. They have to accept the pain and suffer from chronic pain. Instability worse and degeneration progress. This illustration shows normal health disc, no pain, no structural abnormalities. It becomes degenerated and narrow its height. It's a must-have process for most people, but it could be painful or non-painful. What makes it different? Eventually, all the disc material will be torn down, modulus spur formation, and facet joint hypertrophy. We cannot diagnose discogenic pain at this stage by traditional provocative discography. Does it mean there is no discogenic pain at this age? I'm going to review the disc degeneration and discogenic pain by chronology. Let's watch the histology. It is a sagittal section of two adjacent vertebra and intersegmental disc between them. Let's watch the illustration of the boxed region. It is a magnification image of the boxed region. It shows the annular fibrosus, nucleus pulposus, and cartilaginous end plate and posterior longitudinal ligament. After fibers of the annular fibrosis attached to the cortical and subchondral bone of the vertebral body, these attachment sites are known as trapeze fibers. The collagen fibers of the inner layers of the annular fibrosis enter the end plate and curve to run parallel to the disc surface of the vertebral body. Next, let me explain the biomechanics. Nucleus pulposus is the inner core of the intervertebral disc. The core is composed of jelly-like material that consists of mainly water as well as loose network of collagen fibers. The elastic inner structure allows the vertebral disc to withstand forces of compression and torsion. The structure of the annular fibrosus is laminated in nature, consisting of a minimum of 15 and 25 concentric layers. Let's watch the illustration of the boxed region. The layers are made up of type of collagen fibers which alternate in angles. These alternative multi-layers provide restrain the intradiscal pressure, resistance to centrifugal force, and prevention of direct extension of annular tears. Spinal compression generates hydrostatic pressure in the nucleus pulposus. Increased pressure expands the nucleus pulposus horizontally, 
expanding the annulus. It raised the tension of annulus, thereby combination forces of nucleus pulposus and annulus fibrosis works together to resist the applied load. By this biomechanics, the health disc provide flexibility and stability to the spine. Let's think about the aging disc. Disc degeneration depends on many factors, and the great difficulty lies in identifying specific mechanism or sequences of destruction of disc tissues. The intervertebral disc is the largest non-vascularized organ in the human body, and the survival and anabolic activity of its cells depend on the diffusion of glucose from the peripheral blood vessels to within the disc. A thin layer of tissue called cartilaginous endoplate may be the subject to process of early degeneration. The nutrition of disc cells could be compromised by static mechanical load and lead to clinically significant degeneration process. As a result, the nucleus pulposus becoming dehydrated year by year. Titrated in phase and only water image show dehydrated nucleus pulposus as low signal intensity. A dehydrated nucleus would lose a viscoelasticity. This demonstration shows a dehydrated nucleus and loss of viscoelasticity. From this moment, spinal compression affects the annulus fibrosis directly. Annulus fibrosis are strong against tensile force but weak to downward compressive force. Annulus fibrosis become wear and torn and squeeze down. Usually, lamella tend to be thinner in the posterior region than the anterior ones. The right image shows a buckling out of the lamella of the annulus fibrosus. Because of lamellar structure and orientation of fibers, annular fibrosus resist strongly against the tensile force, but it has a weak on compressed downward force. The annulus are fragile to compressive force and easy to collapse. Intervertebral disc withstand constant flexion and extension movement. Imagine the stress of the posterior annulus. If there is no acute severe injury, degenerative annular tear usually initiates from the inner layer. The tear extends centrifugally, slowly, and step by step. The annular tear does not propagate to the outer layer in a moment because the annular fibrosis structure consists of multiple layers of fiber bundles arranged in a criss-cross pattern. If the victim does not care about the perpetuating factors, including abnormal bad behavior to the spine, annular tear extends to the outer layer. The sagittal illustration shows propagation of annular tear and eventually propulsion of disc content via the defect. But not all the annular tear provokes pain. There are several options to induce painful disc. There are mechanical, chemical, and neurogenic factors. We have watched 
the mechanical factors in biomechanics, annular tear, and intersegmental instability is the main issue. Mechanical factors initiate chemical cascade reaction. Pro-inflammatory cytokines are considered to be receptive and noxious trigger that can progress to painful conditions. The right image is the endoscopic view of the inflamed disc while explaining the chemical factor. We cannot feel any pain without neural networks. Degenerative changes closely related to the peripheral and central nervous system to cause nerve sensitization and ingrowth. Usually, sensory nerve endings are located only in the outer one-third of annular fibrosis. There are no receptors in the inner two-thirds of the annular fibrosis. So, we cannot feel any pain when annular tear is localized in the inner layer of the annular fibrosis. But there is a reactive process to heal the injury. Neovascular growth in the damage and accompanying sensory nerve growth simultaneously. Sometimes the sensory nerves are very vulnerable to minor irritation eliciting strong pain signals. In summary, mechanical overload due to overuse or trauma leads to biomechanical instability. The damaged disc becomes painful if inflammation and receptive painful nerve ingrowth followed. Let's talk about clinical future of discogenic pain. Pain is principal, mainly in the middle and immediate paraspinal in the lumbar area. Sitting intolerance caused by backache is a significant feature of this disease. This behavior increases the intradiscal pressure and worse of annular tear. Of course, it provokes pain in painful disc condition. According to their study, all five items of medical interview about discogenic pain, such as low back pain after sitting too long, low back pain while standing after sitting too long, squirming in a chair after sitting too long, low back pain while washing one's face, and low back pain in a standing position with flexion were useful for diagnosing discogenic low back pain and show high sensitivity. In the next video of the part 2, I'll talk about provocative discography, difference between discogenic and radicular pain, false negative discogenic pain, and modic change. Thank you for your watching. See you in the next video.